Okay, it's now Wednesday and we're back on the trailer project and the first thing we're going to do tonight is to remove this little utility table that they have screwed into the floor at the front of the trailer. Um, obviously the car will not fit with that table there so that's going to come out as the uh, first order of business and then we are going to do a bit of a sweep out. We're going to check on uh, how the current e-track is installed. We're probably just going to leave that alone and leave that where it is as opposed to unscrewing it and moving it towards the center of the trailer where it needs to be um, because I don't want to leave a whole bunch of uh, screw holes, basically old screw holes in the plywood. We'll just buy some new e-track and it's probably not a good idea, or not a bad idea to actually have some e-track on the outside there just for some uh, extra fastening locations if required. Uh, makes it a bit more utilitarian in the future if there's something else that I can use to uh, tie down to these uh, anchors here on the sides for example. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll get to uh, breaking out this uh, utility table. Alright, Friday 17th of uh, August and just uh, just after 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we're just waiting in a truck stop here waiting for a friend of mine we're going on a bit of a road trip today um, some of you might know David Fiddler through uh, social media or the Toronto Triumph Club David's a uh, fellow Triumph aficionado and British car aficionado he's got more than uh, more than one British car he's got a TR6 a 69 TR6 and he's got a Humber Super Snipe. Not sure what year. I think it's around a 50. I'm gonna say 56, 57, somewhere around there. Uh, he'll correct me on that one. Anyway, um, David had an unfortunate uh, circumstance with his uh, 69 TR6, which is a, or which was a beautiful concourse example. David had a fire. Um, he had a battery short, and uh, consequent fire destroyed the front half of the car. So uh, insurance has taken care of him and uh, now he's in search of, I think he's decided that he's probably not going to restore his 69 and he's purchased another TR6 from a friend of ours in Ottawa named Mike Graham. So we are on our way to Ottawa to pick up the car from Mike Graham. So maybe we'll take a little bit of footage once we get there if Mike and uh, Fid agree. We will take some footage. My, uh, my duty in all of this is to uh, help Fid pick the car up and to follow him back from Ottawa. It's about a four and a half to five hour ride to Toronto. So I'm the uh, mechanic on duty, uh, on standby let's say, just in case there's an issue getting the car back uh, home to where he lives in uh, Waterford, Ontario. So that's the plan anyway. We'll see how it goes. It's not a great day today but it's supposed to be okay tomorrow. So hopefully the sun will be shining, birds will be singing for Fid's uh, adventure home tomorrow. Anyway, we'll take a bit of video maybe tonight when we get to uh, Ottawa. All right, it's Saturday morning and we made it to Ottawa successfully uh, last night. Through torrential rains most of the way, uh, it rained so heavy that cars were pulling off to the side of the road. Anyway, we're uh, going to pick Fid back up uh, this morning. He stayed at uh, my buddy Mike's last night. I stayed at my buddy Mark's. Uh, they live fairly close together, so didn't get a chance to uh, take any video last night. Maybe we'll take some video this morning. We didn't arrive uh, at Mike's until about 7.30 uh, last night, and, uh, and I had a dinner engagement at 8 o'clock, so I left uh, them there to consume some Guinness and uh, have a little chat and go over the car in more detail. But uh, like I said, we'll try to take a little bit of video this morning once we get there. We're about five minutes away. All right, there's the uh, the beast, and uh, morning. There's Fid. There's Mike. Good morning, good morning. There's the. I don't know. I don't quite know what year it is, but uh, here it is. It's white, which is obviously the best color for a TR6, right, Mike? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. So here's uh, Mike's replacement over here. Okay. The school bus, Honda S2000. There's Mike's other beauty up there. Is that a 56, Mike? Yes. What color is it? Cotswold blue. Cotswold blue. That's a beauty. They're not in there going to be the only place they would be in. So Mike's had this car for just uh, about one month short of uh, 20 years, so I'm sure it'll be a bit of a wrench for him to let it go. Is that easy enough to take out? You can just, yeah, they're not, they're just, it's just sitting. 
This is empty. You took everything out? No, it's completely full now. With oh. my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> empty of our stuff, I say. Well, let's just back it out and then we'll let it warm up. Let's see if it starts. Yeah. Eh? It's not my car. I yeah. Make sure it starts. It's nothing to do with you, partner, eh? <laughs> my view for the next six hours. <laughs> about an hour and a half into our drive and things seem to be going pretty well so far. We're just sort of trucking along around 75 miles an hour, uh, about 120 kilometers an hour, and uh, seems to be riding pretty well. Looks like the car is set up pretty nicely, it's got a good stance to it, not squatting too bad, so uh, yeah, looks like he's having a good time up there. Alright, just about 11.30 a.m. and uh, we stopped for a quick pit stop in Bowmanville, Ontario at the uh, En Route. So uh, Fid's just getting some gas topped up. So we'll stay with Fid for about another, uh, probably another 45 minutes to an hour or so and I'm going to pop off at the uh, 404 highway and Fid's going to continue on. He's got about another hour and a half to go after that, which will get him into uh, CAA range if uh, something should happen with the car after I leave him. I don't think it will. The car seems to be running uh, really, really well and uh, Fid's making good time. So anyway, we'll leave you there. It's Saturday afternoon and uh, we're back from our trip to pick up the uh, TR6 in Ottawa with FID and we're back on the uh, trailer project for this afternoon anyway and uh, I believe we're going to do some stripping and painting of the black bits on the back of this trailer so you know where it's looking a little bit rusty and a little bit worse for wear here and then around the framing at the top and the sides and then probably also on the inside of the door here down the bottom. We're going to give this a good coat of uh, probably uh, implement our uh, tractor uh, paint or rust-oleum. I think I've got both in the cabinet so uh, probably just going to give that a quick uh, brushing of some uh, fresh coat of paint on there. Not sure whether I mentioned or not and I can't remember. I may have mentioned this in the car on the way to pick up the TR6 that uh, I'd bought some tires uh, on Friday night I bought uh, four new tires and rims 
I bought a winch, a 3,500 pound winch, and I bought some straps, which are here on the floor, and I bought some more E-Track. So we had an expensive night uh, Friday night, but uh, anyway, we've got pretty much what we need to uh, finish the project on this trailer. There's a few things more than I'm going to need, but for the most part, uh, we have pretty much spent most of the money we need to make this trailer what I need it to be. So anyway, we're going to do some of the cosmetic stuff and clean it up a little bit better before we uh, go ahead and install the tires and the winch, etc. I think what we're also going to do is we are once we're going to once we paint this area black. I think what we're going to do is we're going to, as I mentioned, give the uh, trailer a good sweep out, and we're going to give that uh, plywood base a good uh, coating of paint. I think we'll just use a, a gray or a silver porch and patio paint, something that's uh, going to be a little bit more uh, durable and uh, that'll make that look a little bit better. I thought about painting the walls in here white instead of that plywood, uh, but I think we're just going to leave the walls as they are and we'll just concentrate on the, on the floor initially. I can always paint the floors later if I want, or sorry, the walls later if I want to. So that's the plan anyway, but I figured we'd go ahead and do this black stuff first and then we'll uh, go have to have to pick some paint up actually for the, uh, for the floor, so we'll have some time to think about that. Anyway, so that's it for now. We'll uh, get to stripping down the black stuff and putting some fresh paint on. So this is the worst of it by far in here. Just some big sort of flaky rust, so we'll clean that up. I've just uh, cleaned up all the exterior pieces, so that's looking a lot better. All uh, cleaned up and we'll just uh, give that a quick coat of black. We'll work on this area now next, clean that up, and then we'll work on the piece below that. Once the door is uh, raised back up, we can access the uh, other piece, and we'll continue on. All right, just coming up to uh, 5 p.m., and uh, we've got the uh, trailer all painted, and it's just uh, sitting there drying. In the meantime, Les has given me a call, and uh, he wants us to go out and get our cars out of storage tonight. We have a, a British car show tomorrow in Port Perry, Ontario, called uh, Brits on the Lake. So... Uh, it be a little bit risky overnight. It's supposed to be a 20% chance of rain. I can't get a car in the garage, obviously, so uh, nor can less. So both of our cars will be outdoors overnight, which is no big deal, even if it rains. Uh, the only thing is I've got the top down on the TR6 right now, so I'll have to make a decision as to whether I want to uh, leave the top down or put it up overnight. <clears throat> I don't want to really take a chance of it raining. If it does rain just even a little bit and the top's down, then I'm going to have a big problem. So, uh, we're going to do that shortly. I'm just waiting on less as usual. What I might do, I might be able to talk less into this. Maybe I can see if the TR6 will fit into the trailer. We'll uh, hook the trailer up to the truck and uh, see if we can uh, squeeze that baby in. And then we'll get an idea. If the TR6 goes in, the TR3 will definitely go in. So, maybe we'll do that tonight if I can talk him into it. And, if it does fit, maybe I've got a dry place to park it overnight. See? Always thinking. Ah, nice night for a drive. Got lots of the old Capri following us. Uh, finished product as far as the painting is concerned on the black bits at the back of the trailer. So we've done all around the uh, the outside. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but uh, that looks much better. <coughs> and then if I drop the tailgate, we've done the inside here, rails on the back here as well. And this was the rustiest bit here. So that definitely looks much better than it did. So Anyway, job one is done on the trailer, and we'll move on to 
doing some cleaning again of the uh, the wood surfaces in here and then we'll buy that uh, deck and porch paint and we'll give this a coat of uh, silver or gray uh, I do have the TR6 home tonight we are going to a show tomorrow so as I've mentioned so maybe I can talk less into trying to bring this in tonight and see if it actually fits in the trailer it might not be a bad idea while I have a car home otherwise I'm gonna have to make a special trip up to the uh, storage location to get a car to see if it fits so we know if the TR6 fits the uh, TR3 is gonna fit because the TR6 is two inches longer so anyway we might do that tonight before it gets too dark okay so here's our trial fit on the uh, 73 TR6 and uh, actually I could even open my door and get out which was pretty good so uh, as far as the room at the front is concerned I think we've got a little bit of room at the front we've probably got yeah. Hard to say. What do we got there? Six inches? Eight inches less? At the front? Well, I'm, I'm used to eight inches, so let me check for you. Dave. Oh, yeah. Whip it out less and check. My mom watches this channel. Dave, you got about, honestly, look. To my the bumper? Center of your bumper? Yeah. What's that? It's at least seven, eight inches. Okay, well, the car's not going to move that much. So let's see if we can shut the tailgate. So that's promising so far. Anyway, I'm less is going to lift the gate while I get in in here and just make sure. So, okay. Back in a sec. Okay, so I probably got at least six inches, if not more, to the back gate when it's closed. So that's pretty good there. And uh, as you know, actually, it's pretty good. I can actually walk all the way up to the side of the car to get this strapped up here, which is good. And you can strap there, right? At the front. And I've got that much room in the front, so a TR6 will fit in a 14-foot trailer. So that's good to know. Right, Les? Yep. Although, for some reason, I have no tail lights, which is kind of odd. Unless my car needs to be running, I'll have to check it when I turn it back on, but that's very odd. Now, so, do you have any planks? Okay, we're going to pull the car out anyway. Right, but we need to put planks, planks. down because it was steep. He says it was steep. It was almost touching the bottom of the ground. So I'm probably going to do a flip out ramp for the, uh, like a, a hinged ramp for the tail of the, or the top of the ramp. So that'll make it a little easier to uh, get in and out. All right, let's get this thing out here. It's hot in here. All right, tail lights are back. It looks like I just had a loose fuse on the fuel ho fuse holder. Might be a little bit corroded. So we'll probably just switch that out. Anyway, we just uh, roll the fuses around and uh, Lights came back on, so we're good to go. I'm gonna check my brake lights to make sure they're working, but they should be now. So, anyway, that's a good thing. 